Hello, my name is Michael Harbett. I'm a professor of internal medicine at Wayne State University in Detroit, and I'm the director of the Environmental Cancer Program at Carmanos Cancer Institute, also in Detroit. Carmanos Cancer Institute is a cancer centers and is one of the National Cancer Institu Institute Centers of Excellence. The reason that I'm making this uh, video for the uh, Science Corps and for the other groups that have asked is that I have a good deal of experience in seeing patients who have exposure to petroleum distillates, petroleum, and organic solvents. And I'm getting a lot of calls from physicians from around, around the country, or more specifically in the Gulf region, looking for what sorts of uh, advice I can offer them individually in terms of diagnosis and treatment of these patients. So we did issue through Science Corps a uh, guidance for clinical care, and we also issued a lengthy uh, examination of the healthcare issues associated with petroleum and petroleum distillates and uh, dispersants. But we thought it would be worthwhile for clinicians to be able to have the advantage of sort of a conversational curbside consult um, uh, reflection on some of the experiences I've had. I, I need to tell you, first of all, before going much further, that this is not intended as medical advice in any individual particular case. The first thing I'd like to talk about that has sort of been on my mind in this whole uh, discussion is this issue of permissible exposure limits or measurable values or amounts of toxin to which someone may get exposed. You first need to know that these should not be used as guides to medical treatment. They, uh, these levels which were determined as safe or unsafe were done so through a process which starts out as scientific, but which often ends as being quite political. Um, you really can't depend on them for deciding whether or not you're going to treat an individual patient. They can be indicators of whether or not patients are exposed to a given toxin or not, but they have very limited um, medical value beyond this. Um, this is documented in the literature time and time again, and I, I really want to caution you to not get drawn into the belief that just because something has a low parts per million or parts per billion score, if you will, that it's safe for people to be breathing it in or drinking it. So among the first things I want to pass on to you is be very cautious when interpreting the results of air sampling or water sampling because they may not be accurate, uh, not only in their actual essence, but also accurate in terms of what's safe and what's not safe. So among the sorts of things that we often see in people with these exposures um, in the short term is a cough. Um, people will come in and say, I, I work in a refinery or I, I've been exposed to this um, spill of uh, petroleum products and uh, I, first I had burning in my eyes, I had a rash, I had a sore throat, I had a cough, but that was a few weeks ago and I'm now still having a cough which seems to be exacerbated by uh, almost any exposure including uh, heat or cold air or uh, a rain. Well, among the things that petroleum products or petroleum solvents or petroleum distillates, all sort of lumping these together for the purpose of this discussion, um, among the things that are known to be caused are uh, asthma and high, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, sometimes called chemical pneumonitis. And there may be also, um, uh, though much more rare, the occurrence of lipoid pneumonitis. What basically this is, is a classical inhalation injury which causes some damage to the uh, surface epithelium. Um, it can result in, a, in an asthma, mindful that asthmas are not wheezing many of the times. Asthmas can manifest as shortness of breath, as chest tightness. Of course, you have to rule out myocardial disease um, when you have the chest tightness presentation. Uh, cough, uh, sort of horking. People often use the term horking. I have a horking cough. Um, and other uh, related presentations that we see in, in asthma in general. Now, if the organic solvent or organic product uh, or petroleum or petroleum distillate gets deeper into the lung, it can cause a hypersensitivity reaction. Hypersensitivity reactions, I'm sure as you remember, are basically in a magnified uh, allergic type or reactive slash allergic type response um, on the part of the lung to inhaled um, matter. And because these uh, petroleum products are often um, quite microscopic, uh, they're able to get deep into the lung and do, do damage. Um, the treatment for this is, uh, of course, immediate removal from exposure. We often use steroids and the supportive measures that are used in respiratory distress. Uh, this can be a very serious condition. It can go on to become chronic. Um, it can uh, 
lead to bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia, or what is now called, uh, what we used to call boob bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia, or now what we call cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, top. Um, these are within the realm of scientific cascade uh, cause and effect that, that can be seen. Another thing that often is troublesome in patients who present at uh, exposure to these uh, group of agents is there will be memory loss or mental confusion or bad dreams. Um, we know that this family of uh, exposures can cause neuropsychological effects, um, all sorts of emotional instability in the susceptible patient. And the simple mini mental status exam, exam where are you, what day is it, do you, do you know who the president is, may not be enough and they will require exposure, I'm sorry, uh, will require a referral to neuropsychological uh, evaluation. Another problem we see, um, that I want to keep this sort of brief, and I, and I want to stress again, this is not a complete guide. Uh, you can find more complete guidelines, um, not only on our postings, but uh, the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has uh, a very good website where there are booklets uh, and educational modules to help uh, make uh, occupational and environmental uh, diagnostic uh, steps. So we will often see a rash, um, which uh, is related to the uh, exposure to the petroleum or petroleum products. Um, the treatment for this is, is the treatment for most environmental agents uh, is removal and uh, appropriate topical um, medications, sometimes steroids, uh, sometimes systemic steroids. Um, and of course the normal uh, dermatologic treatment. Another problem that we see because of the exposure of patients to these agents is neuropathy. Um, we do know that in, in many of the petroleum products there is an N-hexane. N-hexane is associated with Wallerian degeneration of the peripheral nerve. Um, it's a dying back degeneration. The myelin sheath disintegrates. Um, in testing for this, one of the sort of pearls I'd like to leave you with is remember that EMG is not abnormal in neuropathies until about a third of the nerve has been essentially killed off. So if a patient comes in with some sort of mild neuropathy but you get no, no uh, EMG changes, um, you do still need to consider the role of petroleum uh, exposure in the uh, diagnostic uh, uh, differential and in the treatment process.